Hey guys, remember this set? It's my Admiral 24A12. Did a lengthy restoration series on it. Well, recently I was contacted by someone local who was interested in buying one of my sets, in particular this one. And by happy coincidence, I was considering selling it for some time anyways because both a friend and myself have picked up unrestored examples of this exact same model. So I really don't like having duplicates. So we worked out a deal and he'd like to come pick it up. But before I'll, I want to do that, I want to make sure it's working. So I fired it up and the video is still working great, but the sound quality was very poor. So I've pulled the chassis out and have it up on the workbench. Here's the lower and upper chassis up on my workbench. So I'm going to try to go through this systematically, efficiently, and quickly. So, the lower chassis is the power supply and audio amp. It's the audio, I guess you call it the audio preamp, and then the uh, audio output tube. 6SQ7, followed by 6V6. I already tested these tubes, they test like new. So I think I can safely eliminate them. It's the audio output transformer, I'm pretty sure, and these two wires go to the speaker. It's kind of a... I don't know why they did this, but they hardwired the speaker to the chassis, so before I even got this set, somebody had already cut these wires and twist them together when uh, you put it back in the cabinet. I, I plan on replacing these wires with something better and uh, not have that ugly splice. The upper chassis has everything else. So it's tuner and first video IF, and I believe that is the audio trap that feeds into the first audio IF stage, second audio IF, and then ratio detector, and then that feeds to the lower amp via this RCA connector. Here's the schematic. Kind of tiny, but model my way through. So there's the SQ, there's the RCA input through a 0.01 microfarad cap into the 6SQ7, then into the 6V6, into the speaker. Now I've already recapped this, and I think I replaced all the resistors. I was able finally to dig up the BNC to RCA connector, so I'll put this going into the amp. I got the level down really low. For the set to warm up. Okay. Let's see. Do sine wave. Continuous. I can hear it already. Well. I figure this thing has a lot of gain. I got it on minus 60 dB with this turned almost all the way down. It's weird, it kind of popped in loud. I wonder if that was. I don't know, it's already. Ah. <laughs> Dirty connector. Yeah, wow, well, it's supposed to have quite a bit of gain. It must be a pretty low level signal coming from the TV because minus 60 dB and this is turned down. That's. As I suspected, nice and clear. So, obviously no problem with the amp. So, next up, test the tubes. The tubes tested like new, and I didn't really think that's where the problem was anyways. So look underneath the chassis, there's the audio stuff up in there. So There are still some original resistors. I can double check those. Otherwise, the caps have been replaced, including... Micas, and I'll double check. I have to go back to the videos or photos, but I'm pretty darn sure I replaced some mica caps inside of these cans. There are still some original resistors and mica caps here, but that's all in the sweep circuits, which seem to work right fine. Uh, work fine. Oh, that's interesting. There is one original paper cap. I missed this the first time around. That's not the audio or uh, video IF stages though, it's way over here, but I'll replace that guy while I'm at it. So it's tuner, tuner output, first video IF, there's the output of the trap, going to the first audio IF, second audio IF, and ratio detector. 
That's where I think the problem is. I'm going through the alignment procedure now, which is pretty straightforward on these admirals, and you don't even need a sweep generator. Just uh, an accurate RF generator, so I'm using the VA-62, which also has a floating DC supply, which is handy because you're supposed to connect negative 4.5 volts to the AGC bus. And I even provide you with a digital meter here, so 4.5 volts. Got that clipped in to the points they indicate. Use a little RC filter on the... Uh, a video output, connect that to a VTVM, and then I'm feeding in fixed RF. In this case, uh, this step, 21.25, that is the sound carrier, and they say to adjust a one for a minimum, that's the trap. Oh, and I'm feeding in a signal to the shield over the mixer oscillator tube. I'm using the 75 ohm output termination pod from my B and K415. So let's run my meters at right now. Find a little twill stick here and coil here. I'm not trying to make this be a tutorial. If you really want to align an admiral set, print this out and study it yourselves. Uh, suffice it to say, I'm adjusting this coil so that I get a a minimum, which was a pretty much where it was. I have aligned this up before, just that I have somewhat better equipment now than before. But, and then the next few steps are to peak the audio IF stages. That's A2, A3, A4, and then A5 is the ratio detector. You adjust that so you get a zero reading and a frequency to either side of 21.25 should make the meter deflect positive and negative. It's one uh, handy thing with these VTVMs is that you zero adjust. Well, you don't have to just put it on zero when you're doing a ratio detector. It's typically what you want to do is put it on that mark. And that's exactly why they provide it. So you take this and this meter's getting kind of flaky on me. There's something loose inside. I have to repair this one of these days. But <laughs> generally it works. It's kind of whack it every now and then. Alright, so now, if you feed in a signal as it swings positive and negative, the signal will swing on either side of that. You want it to be symmetrical. So that's how you can do all this without a sleep generator. However, they do then have steps at the bottom to get the overall response. And I'll do that. I'm just going to do the audio. And uh, it's on another page, but they should, should have a nice S curve. So I'll go through these steps with a fixed RF generator. I think it's 21.25. Yeah, so... 21.25 megahertz for all the audio steps. The audio is just up to step 3. That's so why I need to adjust A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. And I'll check the uh, S curve and I uh, think I'll use this. Well, mm, nah. I'll use this WaveTech Model 1002 sweep generator. I peaked the three IF coils and they were pretty much right on. I got a real good gain, everything seemed great. And I got to the ratio detector and it was pretty much dead center when I, I, I tweaked the meter so that the needle was in the middle and that's pretty much where it stayed. Except what I then did is I, so at 21.25, the audio carrier, I went to 2100 and then I went to 21.5, which should have swung the needle negative and positive and it just barely moved so I cranked up the output level put it on attenuator on high and cranked it up and it moved but still just barely to either side well now I'm trying to do the sweep uh, so I can see the visual same problem I've got this thing on plus 10 dB output cranked all the way up and I've got my scope on 500 millivolts and I'm getting something resembling an S curve but I should have this like on minus 50 dB the output of this is going right to the grid of the first audio IF I should have to put very very little signal into it so I think something on that ratio detector stage is just not doing what it's supposed to do it's, it's just killing the signal so I gotta start checking the components around there 
Now the 330 Pico Fair, that's where I'm picking my signal off there right at point C. That's a new mica cap. Uh, like I said, there, there is one inside that can. I'm pretty sure I replaced it. Again, I'll go back through my photos. I don't, don't have to open up that can if I don't have to because out the one side are about five lugs below. And, uh, not a trivial exercise. So, first thing I'll do is check the resistors. It's the simplest thing to do. Um, and that 4 microfarad, it is a new electrolytic, but another easy thing to swap out. And uh, I, even though the 6AL5 tested good again, easy thing. I'll try swapping that out right now. Nah, swapping out the 6AL5 didn't do anything. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the uh, each stage, make sure the signal's going through, and then see uh, if I can figure out where exactly things seem to be going wrong. So, signal's coming in there, pin one is down towards the bottom. So I'll check input of that transformer, output of that transformer, input and output of that transformer. And ratio detector is this thing in the corner here. Since yeah, I replaced most of the resistor. There's an original 27k and 150 ohm. That's it. Now, of course, the new component's going to fail, so I'll double check that. And there's that transformer up in there. So I'm going to take that out. I got to take six connections off. And uh, huh, you know what? I'm looking at the solder joints on those lugs. If I had taken that out and put it back in, they wouldn't look like that. There would be some noticeable flux residue in the solder would be shinier like it is on other joints I've done. So maybe I didn't take this out. I also restored an Admiral 24C16. Uh, which is almost an identical chassis. On the other hand, there are scuff marks around the hex nuts. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, fairly adept at soldering, but I think if I'd taken all those leads off and put them back on... Oh, wait a minute. I think you can do it without having to take... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you can just take the shield off. You don't have to take the coil out. All right, so let's do it right now and see what's going on inside that can. Pop the can off, and what do you know? I did not replace that exposed crappy mica cap. See a little silver oxide on the bottom there? It's some black stuff. Now here's the problem. I don't know what that value is supposed to be. Not marked on here. There's a part number of some sort. It's probably the same as what's on the can. Two B eighty seven one. No, it isn't. I can try googling that number. Thirteen B twenty. Thirteen B two zero one dash twelve. Huh. It's that. <laughs> uh, same goes for uh, this can, for that matter. Now, I know I've replaced them on some sets. It must have been my 2416, which this is a 20A1. I think that's a 20B1. Uh, but I, I go look at that one because either that one, they must have been marked on the pieces of mica or I must have found some other service info. And I also know that I've replaced them in my 30A1 series Admiral chassis, and for sure those were marked on the service info. So I gotta do a little bit of research here and figure out what that should be and then cut that sucker out and replace it. It occurred to me on the bookcase right behind me, I've got a series of Beatmans most often needed. So I started flipping through them and in the 1950 edition I found the Admiral 20A1. And I guess what? They do show values. 35 picofarad for that guy and 30 for that. I like some of these Beatmans because uh, sometimes uh, for some of the sets they use blueprints for the schematics. It's kind of cool. Not sure why, and not all the schematics are like this, but some are. Now, I'd like to get a second opinion, so I'm going to look in riders. If I can find any other source that shows 
the 30 and 35, I'll go with that. The reason I want to find a second source is that Sam's didn't have a value, it's not printed on the SAT, so you know, who's to say they got it right? And uh, anyways, if this is really th supposed to be 35, may or may not have one, it's kind of an odd value. And if I'm going to replace that one, I might as well replace this guy too, and then I'll definitely have to go through the whole alignment procedure because it's going to throw off both coils. I dug up the rider's service info for this chassis, which I'm pretty darn sure is just a reprint of the Admiral service info, and they also had 35 for this. I looked through my caps, couldn't find a 35, but I found a 33. And I can't imagine the manufacturing tolerances on these was all that precise, so with the adjustable slug, I think the 33 will work out just fine. I then popped off the shield on the other coil, and what do you know, I did replace these. I knew I had. I just didn't do them, uh, uh, do it for this. And if I went back and watched my video series when I restored this originally, I'm sure I had a good reason at the time. Probably either I didn't because I didn't have one a replacement on hand or it was working fine. So I just let it go. What's curious though is that there are two caps here, both 30s, as they show on here. But some of the schematics, like I think the one on the riders, they only show a single 30 picofarad. But uh, this one had dual 30s. So I, I have a few more Admiral chassis to restore. I think from now on I'm just going to shotgun these mica caps. It's not worth fooling with. I believe what happens is that once these sets are running and there's an applied voltage, that's when the silver atoms start migrating from that electro uh, electrostatic or whatever potential. The electro migration, I think, is the exact term for the process. So a set may work for weeks, months, years, but eventually those uh, they start they start shorting out now if you're not up if you have one of these sets you got poor audio and you're not up to tackling this because you know you could slip and damage a coil or you don't have the equipment to do an alignment the alternative is to do like what I was doing earlier when I tested the audio amp feed your sound straight into here you're going to use one of these uh, over the air converter boxes they got RCA left right audio outputs in the back just take one of those and run it over to here and for instance this box with the remote control you can adjust the volume level directly if not you might want to rig it up so that the audio goes into this and you can use this volume control and then feed it into here I've heard other guys complain about poor audio levels in their admiral sets I could recall one guy even went so far as to replace the SQ, 6 SQ7 with something like a 6 SN7 dual triode to get one more stage of gain, but you know what? I bet he was a victim of bad mic caps. Okay, I was able to recenter that coil again after swapping out the mic cap. So, dead center now. Now, if I go up here and say type in 2100, needle swings positive. If I type in 2150, swings negative. Now I'm going to go back to the, doing the visual sweep generator and see if I get a nice S curve. I've got the sweep generator hooked back up, and that's what I wanted to see. I'm on a minus 20 dB range now, so I have a much smaller input, and it's got a decent S curve, and it's hard, kind of hard to see where there's a marker right there right on the crossover. Let me see a little better now, there's a little squirrel going on right there. The symmetry's not so hot, so I'm going to tweak the coil a little bit, but uh, generally speaking, that looks pretty good. And I think the problem is licked. Just tweaking the top of this coil now. See that changes the crossover point. Doesn't really do much for the symmetry. The symmetry, typically you do the other side of the coil. There's usually dual slugs in here. Yeah, I'll keep going back and forth and see if I get any better, but yeah, that's actually pretty good. I just want well, to see if I get this to well, look a little more like that side. 
Here's a look underneath the chassis again. I replaced that one old paper cap that was part of the vertical integrator. Also spot checked some resistors and found that the cathode resistor and horizontal output tube 82 ohm had drifted pretty high. So I replaced that. So there should be a bit of a boost to the high voltage to get a brighter, sharper picture. And also this resistor, which is on the horizontal oscillator coil, should be 5.6. It was measuring almost 10K. And I had noticed that when I powered up this set, it would take a little while for the horizontal sink to lock in. So I think that should be performing better now. And uh, I spot checked a few other resistors and replaced like one here and a few other here and there. Otherwise, uh, that was it. I'm going to flip this back down and let's hear how it sounds. Oh, I've also replaced the speaker wires. Left them nice and long once I mount this in the cabinet. I'll cut them to length and attach to the speaker inside the cabinet. Alright, let's fire the pattern generator. Channel 3. Bam, locked in solid. That's why I I love this set. It has a real nice sharp picture. Now as for the sound. Yeah, definitely much, much, much louder than it was. I know it's a little noisy, but I'm not that concerned because I think it sounds a little bit noisy with every set I've attached to this pattern generator. And you now it's got some issues like this crosshatch pattern. The vertical line should be as skinny as the horizontal line, so one of these days I either have to try to service this beast or pick up another one. But anyways, it was the volume that was my main concern. As for quality, well, let's flip over. Channel 6. Hook up a little antenna. before YouTube complains. I don't know how much longer this station is going to be around. Not much longer I, uh, from what I've read. I think within the next 12 months there's a low power station which is kind of a... Uh, uh, I don't want to say they're grandfathered in but uh, there was a... I, the FCC decided to allow them past the 2009 cutoff for analog TV transmissions. So this is a quasi-FM radio TV station because channel 6 is right at the lower edge of the FM radio band. Um, but anyways, it's been very, very handy to me for the last uh, four years now, five years, to continue testing my sets with an over-and-air signal. Uh, anyways, so... That sounds great. Now, one last thing I want to do. Well, two last things. One is try it with a converter box, and finally put this all back together, and then try it with my analog cable. Okay, now with the converter box. Amazing. Oh, I must confess, your ingenuity leaves me nice. absolutely speechless. Come on, you're better off that way. <laughs> Hoxsitter catches in barracks four. While Carter and Kinch take the radio out through the emergency tunnel and rendezvous with the underground. What do you think? Suicide. We'd never have a chance. Impossible, Colonel. I'm glad you like it. Hoxsitter and his goons nosing around. The orders are to move that radio along. All right. I came up with a plan, you know. Oh, one last thing I want to do to this set is add a fuse. And I'm going to throw in a thermistor, too. I haven't noticed any flashover but I have with other Admiral sets and uh, it's easy enough to do because they give you some spare lugs down here. Oh, the other reason I want to do it is uh, I don't want the fuse to blow 
this has a bit of a surge current when all the tubes are cold and this will help that out. Otherwise I could use a slow blow fuse but I don't have any in hand so I'll use a regular 3 amp fuse and a thermistor seal 80 good for 3 amps. This set draws about one and a quarter amp steady state so that should work out just fine. So on the terminal strip here there are two unused lugs. So normally the primary would connect here white and brown, go to the upper chassis of the power switch and the AC input. So I'll insert one wire, throw that down here, and add the fuse from that lug to this lug, and then throw in the CL80 between there and there. Actually, I want to put the CL80 up here because it's got a bit warm. There's a big open area up here, nothing mounted on top, so heat will dissipate no problem. Uh, if I didn't mind altering this, I suppose one could drill a 3 8 inch hole and mount the fuse holder, but uh, I don't, I don't want to start drilling holes into things. And uh, in all the sets that I've ever put fuses into, which is basically all of them, I've never had one blow. But you definitely want to add them. And uh, if this fuse ever does blow, it means something's wrong with it, and you really should be pulling this thing out to service it rather than popping that over and jamming another fuse in there. All right, I got this set all back together. Time for one last power up test. This time I'm going to my little rinky dink Comcast cable box. I have the lowest tiered package they have. Really, I just want it for the broadband internet, but. With the pricing structure they have, I got the triple play, so I got unlimited phone service too. So cable in and you get RF on channel two or three out. Here's a little Balin. And here it goes. Balin to convert from 75 ohm to 300 ohm on the antenna terminals. Alright, it takes a little bit longer to warm up uh, than it might have before because of the thermistor. Yeah. Tweak to the horizontal hold. Alright, plenty of volume. Sort of informally, but it may lead to a beautiful friendship. Uh, well, I think I'd better get back to the campus. Well, I'll get you half a coat for you. Thank you. Well, Mr. Burns, as I was telling your wife, your son is quitting college. Ronnie? Why? It's for an hour, but you kept And as always, these sets are best viewed with dim lighting. All right, well, I'm going to contact the set's new owner that he can come pick this up tomorrow. Hope you enjoyed this little video on troubleshooting, weak audio, and an Admiral set, and maybe you picked up some tips. control aisle. You won't shop here again. Your private business is your own. The constant struggle is over. Now there's a better way.